Uh, I mean, when I was younger, I was uh, like when I was really young, I wanted to be an inventor. I mean, my, oh, my brother wanted to be an inventor, so that kind of meant that I had to sort of do that. And then <laughs> I started making sh really shit films with my friends. Um, And then it turned out that they thought it was a kind of joke, uh, but and like, we were kind of making these films. And then they just know by the end, no one actually wants to take part. So I was just sort of filming myself walking around the house and stuff. Um, which obviously turned out to be shit films. You know? I think before then I had this uh, art teacher in secondary school. He kind of he was nice, but he'd always kind of the joke would be that I had a style like it's you know style and basically what he was saying is I wasn't very good um, and then I went to this Basquiat art exhibition and it was kind of like I oh, know I don't actually have to be I don't have to be good at drawing like all a lot of the exercises would be like oh I draw this pair of scissors and you know no, I just I can't do that kind of stuff you know? I remember having active thoughts that kind of like oh, I hate art it's the worst <laughs> like <laughs> Which is kind of weird. And then I think I've equated it in my head, this is definitely probably not true, but um, in like year 11, I fell over really bad on a skateboard, hit my head really, really hard. And then from then on, I think I've kind of changed my mind about art. I think it was slowly in like books, I started to do art. I think I, met, I came to the kind of thing that was like, actually shit, I don't have to do art about, um, about what I see necessarily. It's kind of like what you feel, what's going on around you is kind of what works sort of about you know um, and then from then I started doing these kind of they weren't necessarily cartoons but it was kind of a way to express things without uh, drawing kind of everything it was sort of like a way to tell a story which at the time I was kind of feeling was a different so I just sort of started doing these ones and then uh, I remember I was sort of like standing around with my book open and these like year 12s came past me uh, year, no I was year 12 year 13s came past me like oh my god those drawings are cool and I was like that's so nice. Went to this uh, Edvard Munch exhibition in British Museum. I honestly can't remember. Um, and then I was kind of looking around, and honestly, all I'd seen of his work was like, you know, the screen one, which is really cool, obviously, kind of really impactful and that kind of thing. But uh, I saw this one, it was like a self portrait of him with a skeleton arm. It was just called Self Portrait with a Skeleton Arm. And he drew this kind of like <coughs> detailed kind of uh, drawing of his face, like, I guess it was pretty, and I think generally self portrait is pretty interesting, it's kind of how people see themselves, and then below he'd just drawn a skeleton arm, and then kind of he'd filled the rest in around in black, and I just, for some reason, I saw it, I was like, oh, this is so cool, and I think it was combined with seeing one of his kind of, I don't know if it was his earlier work, or I think his later work was the painting, maybe I'm wrong, I'm not sure. but he did this kind of, it was just, it was really cool, and then I, I went home and I did kind of a self portrait of myself, I don't know, I think to me it's anything that people have put loads of like thought in, it's a kind of a window into someone I think I find most interesting in photography or you know, sculpture or just like painting. I think it's kind of portraying what words can't about what you're feeling and that isn't terrible pain or terrible kind of happiness, sometimes it's just sort of like an in-between and I think that's kind of how paintings capture those kinds of emotions better than anything else can. I guess with the title, I kind of, I don't remember specifically coming up with it. I, I didn't sort of like think, oh, what am I going to kind of name it? I think it came from, I sort of started <clears throat> looking at these sort of products, I guess, and kind of, I mean, I started with using cigarette boxes, and I'd kind of draw these cigarette boxes. And I was thinking how people use objects and kind of routines to sort of sustain themselves through, as in it just, it helps you forget kind of, you know, because if you weren't using these things, you'd be doing something else, you'd, and, and you'd end up dwelling <clears throat> on kind of everything that's going on. But I think when people kind of use products and use routine to kind of just forget about everything. So I started doing a cigarette, but which is much more literal, I thought. And then I started doing like um, toothpaste and things when I was thinking the kind of actually like routine of everything. And then it kind of started to apply to all the other stuff I was sort of looking at, which was things like religion <clears throat> and that kind of thing which actually people do live their lives by religion that keeps them going. 
and it stops them being scared. You know, I wish I could be religious. Like that would be good because it meant, you know, if I had like undying belief, and I'm, you know, I'm sure not everyone has complete undying belief. But if I, I don't know, I think it's a sort of jealousy of like people that can believe in, you know, God and and kind of, but people live their lives by, and it isn't actually necessarily enough to sustain, you know, whatever they're doing. So you need to sort of have some thought in things. Just generally any kind of emotional response, because I think I make work about happy times and I make work about you know, much less. Uh, but I think most of the kind of pieces of work are about kind of quiet moments of the in-betweens, which I think are kind of actually as important as, you know, both of them. And I think especially when you're in a situation of like a show, you kind of see everything and everything's kind of meant to be together, placed in the kind of the situation of the, the room. So I guess when you walk into a room like that, I want to kind of, I think just getting any kind of emotional response from it is, is perfect, but if you can kind of get that, it's not terribly happy and it's not terribly sad, it's just sort of kind of in between, you know. I think people find fulfilment in any way, and if people are kind of happy in it, that's more the better. I just. I don't know, I think any kind of time where you're distracting yourself, not properly thinking about it, is always good, but then, you know, everything's set up to distract you, you know, like, driving, people listen to music, and, you know, I do, it's because it's not nice to necessarily sit in silence and then dwell, so, um, yeah, no, I think people can be sustained their whole lives, but I, I think part of that comes from distraction, you know, like, not, I don't know, maybe I'm just being cynical, I don't know, people obviously... Oh, happy. <laughs>